Hey, this is Chef Perry with SimplySmartDinnerPlans.com, and today we're going to roast the perfect turkey in just 90 minutes. You heard that right, 90 minutes for a perfect, juicy Thanksgiving or Christmas bird. So here we've got our turkey. Uh, whether you've brined it or not, and I like to brine mine, you want to give it a rinse, and then we're going to go ahead and pat it dry with some paper towels. Uh, we want to get that skin dried off as much as possible so the oil will adhere to it. That's what makes it nice and crispy during the roasting process. Give it a good drying. I like to wad up that paper towel and stick it down inside, kind of catch up any juices that might have caught down there in the cavity, sop those up. We'll just throw that paper towel away when we're ready. And then we're going to cut off some of this excess plastic. We just snip away uh, at where they're connected to the legs there. And then if you reach in with two fingers, you can just pop that plastic loose. It's just stuck in either side of the bird. Pop that loose, throw it away. Next, we're going to get rid of this worthless thing. It's not going to tell you how long to cook the turkey. It's a useless piece of plastic. Throw it away. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a little trimming here. Uh, let's go ahead and cut off uh, the tail. And we're going to just cut that right off the front. There's, uh, we'll roast that in the pan with the rest of the turkey, but there's no need to leave it hooked to the bird. And cut away a little extra trimming of the skin there. Uh, we'll save those. Like I said, those will be great for making broth or making the gravy later on. Next, we're going to flip our whole turkey over because we're going to spatchcock it. And spatchcocking uh, is a process of removing the backbone and then flattening out the bird so that it cooks more evenly um, at a higher temperature. And as you can see, we're going to slice along either side of the spine. I like to use a good heavy-duty pair of kitchen shears for this. Uh, you can use a meat saw if you have one, uh, but I found that the shears work pretty well. You go ahead and just cut up one side. You cut all the way up to the top, right along the ribs as they come out of the spine. Uh, that spine's pretty heavy, so try to keep to one side of it so you're cutting actually through the ribs. You cut all the way up through the end. You're going to do the same thing to the second side. So you can see we've done here. You just go ahead and cut that loose, open it all the way up. Now we've cut out the spine, we've spatchcocked it, now we're going to flip the whole bird over and we want it to lay flat. So what we need to do now is we need to break that breastbone. So we're going to go ahead and put both hands right on top of your turkey after you've uh, situated it a little and we're going to press down good and hard and you'll hear that breastbone pop and the whole turkey will flatten out. Both, both turkey breasts will kind of pop up on either side and flatten out and you'll see that your turkey is laying much flatter now. Now it's ready to roast. That's a spatchcock turkey. I like to use a roasting pan. Um, you don't have to use a rack like this if you don't have a rack. Uh, one quick kitchen trick is take about three feet of tin foil and go ahead and crumple it up like this into a big uh, cylinder and then you're going to go ahead and make a circle out of that, kind of press it together so it stays together and voila, you have a quick and easy disposable roasting rack to put inside your pan. So now we've got our turkey, spatchcock turkey, laid out in the pan. As you can see, I'm just uh, kind of pulling those legs out to either side, trying to expose as much of that skin as possible. That's one of the beauties of spatchcocking, is it's going to go ahead and roast all of the skin instead of just the skin on top. I like to leave the backbone in to roast, because I'll use that again for my gravy or my stock later. I'm going to go ahead, I've salt and peppered it uh, pretty heavily, and now I'm going to give it a good dosing of some high-grade olive oil. So, so you want to go ahead and preheat your oven to 450 and roast for 90 minutes. That's for a 12 to 14 pound turkey. You'll add three to four minutes per additional pound. You want to roast to a finished temp of about 150 degrees. So when you use a probe thermometer, you're going to stick that down in the thickest part of the thigh meat and it should read, read 150. That turkey, while it's resting, will rise in temperature up to about 160, uh, which is your perfect finished temp. That's what you're shooting for. You want to check it about every 30 minutes. Add some hot water to the pan if you need it. If it starts to get a little browner than you like it. Uh, tint it loosely in foil and that should take care of the problem. So here's our finished turkey. As you can see, we've got lots of beautiful brown skin. That's one of the nice things about spatchcocking a turkey or a chicken is that by opening up, you get all of the skin brown instead of just the skin on top brown. As you can see, we've stuck in a little instant read thermometer there. We're just a little above 150, so we're right in the range we want to be. That'll raise up to about 160, like I said before. Here we've gone ahead and put our turkey on the cutting board, and we're going to go ahead and start taking it apart. Uh, the, le the leg and thigh might fall off for you in the moving process. If not, just give it a little quick cut. Uh, with your knife, they'll come right off. They're cooked through really nicely. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove the legs from the thighs. And by doing that, as you can see, we just lift up. We cut straight down till you feel the joint. Grab it on both sides. Give it a little pop. It'll cut, pop clean right out of that joint. Just slice it through and you're all done. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove the drumettes from the wings. Uh, we've taken the wing tips off before we cooked them because they tend to just cook up and, and burn anyway. So I usually just remove them. So you can see, you just get in there and you kind of cut around the ball joint and Pop, again, pop it loose, much like we did with the leg and the thigh. We'll go ahead and do that to both sides. And just cut right up in there. You'll feel that joint. Just reach in, give it a pop, and uh, it should pull right off. This is, turkey is still a little bit hot, so I'm handling it carefully. And there you go. We've got the drumettes removed. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove the breasts from the rest of the turkey carcass. 
Very easy to do. There's a, you'll feel that bone right there that separates the two sides of the turkey breast. You're just going to cut right along that with the blade of your knife. Let that kind of be your guide. And you're going to slide right down that and over the rib cage. Uh, pull it away helps a little get that knife in there. And you're just going to slide that knife right along the bones until that whole turkey breast just comes right off like that. It's very, very easy to do. Cut that loose. And then we're going to do the exact same thing to the other side, just following the other side of that bone right all the way down through and just kind of letting that knife follow the curve of those ribs until that breast comes right off the bone. And we'll cut through that skin a little bit and we'll save that carcass, of course. That's going to make our... Uh, turkey stock later for making our gravies and broths and that kind of thing. And uh, there we go, two perfect turkey breasts. So here are all of our pieces. Uh, we've got our uh, turkey breasts, our legs, our drumettes. Uh, we'll put in our thighs. You could serve it just like this if you wanted to, or you can go ahead and carve it up further. Um, if you're going to store it or if you're going to travel with it, it would be best to stop here and go ahead and do your finishing cuts uh, on site so you don't take a chance of your turkey drying out. Uh, but if you're going to go ahead and serve right away, the next thing we'll probably want to do is go ahead and start carving it up. So here we've got one of our turkey breasts, and what we're going to do is we're just going to slice it on a bias. That simply means at an angle. Uh, we're going to cut it straight down from tip to tip, just like this, into one-inch sections. Uh, this type of cutting of the white meat gives us a much juicier, much more tender cut than that traditional thin slices off the breast. You're cutting against the grain, and you really dry the meat out. That's why a lot of us grew up with really dry turkey breasts and don't like it, is because it was cut improperly. So this is the best way to cut it to get the juiciest meat. So next we're going to slice up the thigh. It's very simple to do. First thing we want to do is there's a couple of bones in here we're going to want to remove. We've got this one long uh, bone here that we'll just slice up either side of it. It'll pop right out. It's very, very easy to cut out of there. And we'll remove that, cut the meat off the back. We don't want to lose any of that good thigh meat. That's my favorite meat on the bird. Save that again for stock. Go ahead and flip that over and uh, we'll just start making some slices here just like we did with the breast. About half inch to inch thick slices. Put those right across, try to save as much of that skin as possible. Slice through that leftover flat meat there. And there you go, we've got our thigh cut up. And here we're going to do the same thing to the other thigh. Uh, there's actually two bones in the thigh. The other one was pulled loose, so this one I'm doing it again to show you here. So here we're cutting out that first bone. And you don't be afraid to manhandle it a little. The dark meat's all going to kind of come apart on you anyway. But here's that second bone. It's more like a, a, a flat or almost like a clavicle type of a bone. And uh, you can just get your knife in under and pull it right loose. Again, save that for your stock pot. And now you've got a whole deboned turkey thigh. And we'll go ahead and take our knife and we'll slice that up just like we did the first one. Uh, the thigh meat tends to be a little more forgiving than the breast. That's why it's a lot of people's favorite. It tends to not dry out as much. Uh, it's a great one to save for soups because you can reheat it and it'll stay nice and juicy and tender. So here's your finished product. A lot of folks... Uh, one thing they complain about about the spatchcock turkey is they don't like they don't have that beautiful presentation. I think here you can see that uh, that you can get a very nice presentation even with a cut up bird. Use a nice platter. You arrange it. You got your two breasts in the center, the legs to the outside, the thighs to either corner. You have a beautiful presentation. You sprinkle this with a little parsley or something. It'd be just gorgeous on your Thanksgiving table. So again, this is Chef Perry with SimplySmartDinnerPlans.com. Thank you for joining me on this video of how to spatchcock and roast the perfect holiday turkey in just 90 minutes. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and go to our website and sign up for our free newsletter. We'll send you recipes for every night of the week along with an itemized grocery shopping list. Uh, check out our great recipes, tips, and how-tos also on our website at SimplySmartDinnerPlans.com. Your free membership helps, helps us teach shopping, cooking, and basic nutrition skills to at-risk teens and youth. Thank you very much. See you next time.